Hi everybody, Nigel here, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and uh, welcome back to the channel. And here today we have part eight of the Big Bad Buff Build for Beginners. There we go, I got it right. And um, yeah, this is part eight, and in, remember in part seven we looked at gluing all the bomb doors up and we got the cockpit in and everything. And I'll be honest with you, I filmed part seven just half an hour ago, so I'm still waiting for those that glazing to dry and go hard before we can sand that down. On the cockpit to be solid mounted in there and basically you know make sure all that's in there is solid the windows are sanded down and then we've got no fears about anything being pushed in and falling around inside because if we try and sand those windows and one pops in once the fuselage halves are together you never get it back in we could go around with the um with crystal clear this product here micro crystal clear you can go into um parts with holes in them and you can make clear windows rather than having to uh Put the clear part in the only trouble is when the windows are, are tiny like with say with these with these little windows here it would probably work very well but with something this side it will do it but it tends to kind of thin out in the middle and thicken on the edge so you end up with sort of a concave surface um i don't know if you could actually then apply more to the top of it once it's gone off i've never tried it but uh yeah larger windows it's 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 good but it's um it's okay for like buildings and stuff, but on an aircraft where you want it to be smooth and flush with the outer surface, it doesn't always work so well. So what I thought we'd do is have a look through the instructions and see what else we can be getting on with. And I went to the back here and we can see here we've got the, the fin and the tailplane assembly. So I thought we'll get them glued together and then they can be clamped up and be left to dry. So when we need them, they're, they're ready to go as well. The same as we did with our, our wing tanks and bombs and, you know, our wheels and tyres and everything. So... Let's go on and get this done. So this is actually step 20. Now with my kit, um, obviously, as with all of them, you buy them a second hand off eBay. And I think somebody had actually had this apart and sort of, you know, put the fuselage house together to see what it looked like. So uh, I think they had these off just to see how, how it looks. And this is obviously the D version with the tall tail. The H version is sort of cut off down here, the G and the H, should I say. And we've got this lovely big um, air intake on the front here. Now, if I was building this, as a super detailed model with all, you know, rescribed and rivet and everything, I would put a box section in there to box it out. Because as it is, you look in there and you see a location pin, so it's not ideal. But this is an out of the box build, so that's that. Now, we can see here where whoever took these parts off the uh, tree, they've just literally sliced them off. And luckily they haven't taken chunks of the, of the parts off with them. So we can just come along now and remove remove these chunks that are on here with our cutters and that's that done okay that's great so now we can come along with a, one of our coarse zebra sticks and we can just sand away now the tip here to make sure you get a nice sharp trailing edge on things like tail planes wings and stuff like that what I often do is come along, you can use a magic marker if you want to on this. Uh, where's the fine one gone? There it is. You can use a magic marker on something like this because it doesn't matter because it's going to be um, black anyway. So, oh, looks like it's run out. I'm just going to go along here and mark a line. You need, need quite a lot. It's no good just putting a tiny bit on there. You need quite a few. And what I'm doing here is just marking this edge because it's a wide contact area. And what we want to do is sand it so that the all the black pen disappears. Because if you can imagine, if you're looking down on it like you are now, what you don't want is for this. You want it to be nice and sharp and closed up on the back end. And one, one of the biggest downfalls with most injection molded kits, the... Um, Trailing edges of wings and stuff tend to be too thick. Now looking here, we could have a bit of an issue because we've got this moulding here, which is like a some sort of sensor um, on there. But if you look, you can see, I don't know if they like catch it, but you can see that the plastic is actually going away. So if we don't sand away that sensor, we're going to end up with a gap. So let me show you that now. So if we sand along here now, we can see that I'm sanding and I'm not actually cleaning the trailing edge. I'm only cleaning just inside it. So if we put these two halves together, 
like so. Let's get them lined up. You can see we've got a... No, they're not lined up, are they? You can see we've got a gap. Okay, and that's no good. So we're going to have to sacrifice that sensor for getting a correct looking uh, fin. Because the last thing you want down there is a gap. And if you fill it, you'll just end up with a great big thick rudder. So we'll sand this away. And you can see when you come down here again, we're sanding away, keeping the stick flat. And you can see that it's only cleaning up the inner edge. So we need to sand this flat. And I'm not pushing the stick. If you start pushing the stick, you'll um, you'll lose your uh, you'll lose your shape on here. You, you basically end up you'll, you'll end up pushing this down. You'll bend your stick or whatever. So I'm just very very lightly rubbing it, just until all that pen mark disappears. And yes, I know this isn't interesting to watch, but good for you to see if you're a beginner it's good for you to see stuff like this happen in real time rather than me go boom 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 there you go and you can see it's quite deep there it's, it's actually very deep indeed I'm wondering if I can actually sort of try and bend it a bit and just try and pull that back because I think it's probably distortion after it's molded that's caused the problem. I'm just going to put some pen on there again just in that area. There we go. You can see it. I look in there. We've got rid of all the pen. So basically, bending it was the thing to do. Remember, in part seven, I bent the instrument panel, and now I'm bending the fin. So what's going on here? It's all distorted. This model is all bent. So we just clean up, and make sure we've got the front edge here, the leading edge, should I say? And this is all about getting good, solid glue joints, good seamless joints. You know, avoiding the need for filler and stuff. Because you can go and pile filler on afterwards, but it's so much better to just get it right in the first place, really. So I need to tweak that in. You may not have this problem with your model if you're building along with me, because that is probably an issue with this coming out of the mold too quickly or, or too late or whatever. And we can see we've got the same on here. This one is actually bent, so I'm going to tweak. Probably the best way to do this actually is roll it down the edge of the... I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but if I push the board up here, I'm just going to roll that down the edge of the modelling cutting mat. And that should help to push that edge over. Because I keep repeating myself, what we're after is a nice, crisp, sharp trailing edge. We don't want a great big thick blunt edge. Remember this is 70 second scale so it should be, you know, at this scale it should be kind of razor sharp. There's like a loose piece of plastic there which is very strange. There we go, that's gone. Again you can see the pattern that's sanding, it's not totally flat. See it's here but it's not sanding there, it's not sanding there. There we go. Job done. Just make sure we've got the leading edge. <clears throat> and then when we put these together, we should see that we get There's some flash in there I need to take out. We should see now that we get a perfect You can see that there is nigh on perfect. I need to do a bit more sanding. But the trailing edge 
will come down lovely. No, it still needs some more sand. You can see we've still got a gap there. So we'll do the same again. This time I'm going to use a medium pen. I'll use my Sharpie. Get some proper black marks on it. Here we go. Once again, going with the sanding stick, sanding lightly. And you can see now, we're back to this situation again of just sanding the inside edge, so that was our problem. So obviously I was pushing too hard, and you can see the result. See, we've still got a bit of a gap there, but things are improving. So we'll do the same on the other side. Again, lightly sanding. This stick's getting uh, worn out. I need, I've got a new set here. This is a new set of them. These zebra sticks from Infini. And uh, I'll try and get as much life out of these as I can. Like, like I said, I've had, a, I've had a complaint about promoting premium hobbies, but I'm not so much promoting premium hobbies when I show the products, because that's where these come from. It's saving you some money, because you can use the code NMB10, and that will um, I'll get you 10% discount off everything. Um, but also, the other reason I do it is because I get so many questions especially for beginners obviously you're going to get questions from beginners where do you get that from what is it how much is it how do you use it blah 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 blah. so if i can just cover the where does it come from that's less emails for me to answer and that is why i promote premium hobbies There we go, it's looking better. Still not perfect, still not a really sharp edge, so I'm going to carry on sanding and, um, and get it absolutely razor sharp. And after about 20 minutes of sanding, we finally got something representing a, a thin edge. So um, there we go. We've also got to be careful with this when we assemble it. it. It's so floppy, there's nothing supporting it in the middle. So what I may do is when I know how wide apart these need to be i may just drop some plastic or something in there just to support it because it's you know if you touch that it's going to split the seams open all the time which we can use to our advantage while we're assembling it because we can squeeze it and you can see how the the back end opens up so we can drop cement in there and it will um it'll capillary around and we need to make sure we've got plenty in there so what i'm going to do first of all is get my Revell contactor and hopefully it's going to come out. Yes, it is. I'm going to run up there with the Revell contactor. And that will 
give us our initial gluing down if you like. So there we go, that's that together now. So we can just push this trailing edge together. Being very careful, if any glue comes out, make sure you rub it off your fingers before you go back and touch it. And there we go. So we now know that we've got some glue holding all that together. Okay. And if you notice, I haven't glued the leading edge. I've done that on purpose. And then I'm going to come along with my extra thin. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. There's the Phil Flory method where you hold it upside down and you dab the brush underneath and the capillary action will pour the glue up into the joint. And the beauty of doing it this way is that you won't risk running glue all down the side of your control surfaces. So just dabbing the glue on like that and letting it pull into the joint. The other way is to give it a squeeze, open up the joint and drop it in. Okay, give it a squeeze, drop it in. The biggest risk of that is if you miss and it runs down the side and goes under your finger. That's what you really don't want. If it does run down the side, and you end up with like a stream of glue, do not touch it. Just leave it alone and it will basically pretty much disappear. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing this until I see it oozing out when I let go because that way I know it's all wet, it's all going to be bonded. It's all wet up here, it's good up there, but here it's not quite so good, so I'll just give that some more. There we go. Okay, one way you can do this, put this down on paper. And that's got it all squeezed together. And I would advise against putting any clamps or anything on because the plastic here, so I've got some glue on my finger there. Fatal accident. Luckily it's only on that part there, so it's be easy to sand that out. But um, yeah, I would advise against putting clamps on, like crocodile clamps, like these things. You should be tempted to do put them along the back edge, especially at the moment. You could do it in about 10 minutes, but the trouble is, this is all, there's so much solvent in there and it's all so thin that the clamp would likely leave a mark. You don't know with a big sink mark where the clamp was. So um, that's to be avoided. And if you want to thin that down further, we can go in with a sanding stick, something like a 400 grit, and we could just sand just sand the uh, the training edge in from the outside and um, that's another way of getting a nice thin edge okay now I've got a slight gap there which is annoying I should have noticed that before I glued it if I squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it it may well close up and it has There we go, so that's that trailing edge done. Now the leading edge, I think I'll leave the leading edge until I know the trailing edge is sorry, because if I don't want to be pulling the trailing edge apart. I want to make sure it all stays nicely clamped down together. The other thing you can do to make sure it stays closed is, is put a block under it, put another block on top, put some weight on it, you know, spread the weight over it, it won't damage it. But these little clamps, if you put that clamp on there like that, you come back in an hour you may well find you've got an indentation where that clamp's been but you could sort of leave it 10 minutes let the glue sort of start to sort itself out and dry off a bit and you uh you should get away with it you can see there when i'm putting the glue on it's capillaring along the joint i did actually have the idea a few months ago um 
Mr. Hobby brought out a glue with a dye in it, so it's black. So I just got some black paint and put it in my glue. A few people copied me. Um, and it's okay, but it's not brilliant. Um, but with stuff like this, it means you can see where you've glued and where you haven't. See, there's some cement there. If I touch that, I'll leave a finger mark. If I just let that dry, it will basically pretty much disappear. Just going to make sure I don't touch it. And there we go. That's our trailing edge done. Right, so we'll leave that to one side. Get rid of that clamp and close our glue up. This is a, another sanding stick that I use. These uh, I got from a company called Models for Sale. And um, they just come as, you just buy this one stick. I think you get them on eBay as well. And they start out white and as they get worn, they start to turn black. But they're quite hard and they're quite coarse. So they're great for stuff like this. Um, it's basically the same thing, but they, these come in sets, a set of six there. You've got 100 grit up to 800 grit. Um, these are individual. So if you just want one or two of these hard sticks, they're available for models for sale. Um, but really, I think these are much better. They tend to wear out. These last longer initially. How can I explain this? After an hour's use, these are starting to show some signs of wear. After 10 minutes use, these are starting to show some signs of wear. However, after an hour's use, they're the same as they were 10 minutes before. After two hours use, they've worn down a tiny bit more. After two hours use, these are knackered. So, you know, it's it's a bit like that. You know, some guys can go out and have two pints. They're absolutely pissed out of their brains, but then they can go the rest of the night and just carry on drinking. Whereas some blokes have 10 pints and you know, it hardly shows. They just get steadily and steadily worse as they go on. It's the same as that. They kind of, these kind of wear straight away and then just stay like that. So, tail planes. We have an upper and a lower half. The lower half here, upper half here. And I believe, are these handed? No, they're the same. So there is an error on this kit. We've got missing vortex generators here, which on the starboard side are going to be upper. And then we've got, yeah, missing gen vortex generators here, which on the port side will be lower. So basically bit of a bit of a mess there, bit of a mistake. So if you're building one of these and super detailing it, you want to make sure you get your vortex generators sorted out. The model collect kit actually has no vortex generators on the underside of the tailplane, which is wrong. So I'm actually thinking about doing a resin conversion for that because the model collect kit also doesn't have the um, these things here, these triangular mechanism parts here that allow that because the whole tailplane um, moves um, just like on an F14 so that the uh, the pilot can dial in his you know for his for his load so he can um, balance the aircraft out so just going to nip these sprue nibs off not making too much fuss about it because we'll be doing seam work and then the same again exactly the same again come along with our black marker just like this Mark up the back edge, take our sanding stick. You can see on there, wow, it's really big, really big sanding to be done here. The main thing is to not push. see here it's quite severe the angle on there so what you can do if you want to just to help is start off just by sanding that inner edge away okay and then you should be able to come along and it will help you get to your 
desired position of having the, the sharp trailing edge. And I, I know for you experienced modelers, watching me sitting here sanding and talking is uh, maybe not most not the most interesting pastime in the world, but for the beginners, believe me, there are guys out there that are watching every move I make. So remember the beginners. We were all beginners once. We were all scared of cutting parts off the of sprues at one time. Again, we've got this inner edge, so I'm going to come along with this coarse stick and just sand away this inner edge, just like so. Now we should see that these go together really nicely, or not. There we go, nicely closed up trailing edge. Still too thick in my opinion, needs to be thinned down. So I'm going to do some more sanding. I'm not going to put you through that. I'll do the sanding and then I'll come back. I've glued one of the tail planes together. We've got the fin glued together as you've just seen. And now I've got the other tail planes off. Done the same thing with the, uh, the sanding. You know, putting the pen on the edge and then sanding it away and ending up with a nice thin edge. Now with these trailing edges on the um, tail planes, on the elevators, I've noticed they've got a weird section to them. They sort of come, it all comes down and then it goes square. So I'll be doing some sanding on these afterwards. So I'll show you, we'll rescribe these trim tabs, make them deeper, and then we'll sand away the, um, the edges of the elevators. Because it, it really is a big thing. If you look at model aircraft, if, if you see them with a great slab sided trailing edge, they do look terrible. So um, we're just going to do the same as before. We're going to put some glue along here. Okay, put plenty on there. Not being shy with it. And then just going to put these together like so. Line up the points on the front. And then put them together and the pins will line everything up. The pins do actually line up perfectly on these parts. So there we go, that's that together, give it a squeeze, run along, whatever, and that's that done. And then I'm going to use the, put the top back on this one, I'm going to use the squeeze and flow method, if that's what you want to call it. So basically squeeze together, drop the glue in, and the glue will go down into that gap. Just like so. You can see it running along. Putting far too much in there, but that's exactly what we want. I don't want a, a dry joint because I'm going to be sanding this in a couple of days. It must be left at least 40 hours before you think about sanding it because it will be um, you know, quite soft from having all the glue in it. So. Just going to come on my fingers, squeeze down like that, and that should be it all pulled together, just like so. You should have no gaps. And you can see on there, you can see the section I'm talking about, it kind of comes down and it's, this is tapering down to a point and this just becomes the big slab. So uh, yeah, we will sand that out. And here's the other one with no gaps in it. All sitting there and drying off. So they're ready to go. So we've done the trailing edges, gonna let them go hard and then we can do the, the uh, leading edges. I don't wanna risk splitting all this open by squeezing it to get the glue in for the leading edges. So that's those done. So we can say that's all done. 
Another thing I've literally just thought of while I'm talking, something you might want to get in the practice of, especially when we're darting around the structures like this, is crossing things off. Now, with an old classic kit like this one, I'll keep the instructions because you never know, somebody someday might want the instructions. They might have a complete kit. I might see a kit on eBay with no box, no instructions. Cheapest chips, I'll buy it. I've got a box of instructions, I've got a complete kit. So I'm not going to write on them, but quite often, um, good idea, as you use your parts, cross them off. Uh, what some people do is circle them when they've taken them off the sprue and then cross them out when they've glued them. But as I say, I don't want to mark these instructions. I want to keep them fresh. So, um, in fact, I have actually written on them, haven't I? Yeah, I've written on here with pencil. Um, so that's that bit there done. Now, there's nothing much more we can do at the moment um, other than pressing on with some of the seam removal. So... We can put our instructions. To, oh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is this. Now, you've got a massive box with this kit, and it seems crazy having a massive box lying around that's quarter full. So, I'm going to take my big old sprue cutters here, and I'm going to remove these sprues from here because I don't need them. Okay, so basically, we can get rid of a lot of this sprue. Like if we look at this one here, you know, we've got those two doors there um, and we've got, that looks like an engine cone or a cone for something or other. I'm not quite sure what it's for, but um, yeah, I mean, we could get rid of a lot of that one. Just basically cut there, cut there. What you could also do is cut this off here and then put your, um, your gear door in the box loose just like that okay you also get rid of this here okay same again there like that same again here we're not going to be using these these are fairings that go in the wings if you don't use your bomb pylons but we are going to use the bomb pylons so we don't need them come on to this sprue here okay all we've got left on there is these few parts so we can go along and cut that off of there just like so get rid of that and as you can see we are reducing this massive box of sprues into a, a tiny little pile There we go. And that is basically it now. This is our kit. We've got these flaps there. And that is it. We've just got the wings. And that's it. Job done. So um, I found we've got another spare pilot in there. Look. So that's obviously come from my other kit. So there we are. Um, so now if you wanted to, you could take the wings out of the box, just find a smaller box or just have these on the side of the bench. But basically that is all you've got left now. And that's your engines and everything there. So if you are, you know, tr struggling for space and you've got this massive box on the table next to you, you don't know where to put it, you can get rid of it now. But I wouldn't throw it away. I'd fold it flat or something, put it in the loft because... Um, as I say, sometimes these kits come up, they've, the, the box has got water damage from them being in the loft or whatever, and they come up with no, no instructions, just the parts in the bag. You can buy them for peanuts, and then because you've got the instructions and you've got the box, you've got a complete kit. I'll see you in a minute. Just a quick note, guys, if you are doing that and getting rid of your sprues, 
save a couple of longer pieces like this just put them back in your box or with your pile um, we're going to need them for doing the stretch sprue later on when we do our panel line repairs so if you are getting rid of sprues keep a few you know sort of fairly lengthy straight pieces and just put them to one side right these have been drying now for i don't know about an hour and a half so trailing edges are kind of sorted and what we can do now is look at doing the leading edges and we, we sanded them we checked the fit and everything and as you can see the fit is perfect we've got a lovely flush joint there so what I'm going to do here is the old cocktail stick method again. Put the cocktail stick in there. And then we're going to come along. And using our fingers to close the gap, we can do our capillary action thing and make the capillary action go where we want it. As I say, if the glue runs down the side, move fast. Get your fingers out of the way. Let the glue run down the side. Don't touch it. Okay, now what I'm trying to do here is make sure we get a nice wet joint. The other thing you can do is squeeze the middle and it pulls the joint apart. Then the glue will capillary along that joint. Just like so. And then just to make sure we'll come along with the brush. Okay, now we've got a nice wet edge there. So that should be all beautifully glued down and solid. And then we'll just come along here and push some in here. And there we go, and that we can clamp actually. We can just put a close peg on there, but keep the close peg on the edge. You don't want to be putting the close peg any further in because you'll actually pull the parts apart. So um, we'll put that one there and we will just put a clamp on here on the edge just like that. Oops, and that'll hold it all together. And now we've got a fully completely glued tailplane. So we'll do the other one, then I'll be back. They're both done, <clears throat> they can go out of the way. They're all clamped up and have a look at the fin. Now the fin is a bit of a different story. If you squeeze it together here, you can see it pushes it together rather than opens it up. So um, we'll have to do a bit of special trickery here. So I'm going to put my cocktail stick in oops, and hold the bottom apart like so, so that we can start to work on the top. Now you can see up here we've got a tiny gap. So I'm going to start all the way up here and let the glue capillary around move the peg down or the uh, cocktail stick down as you can see I'm just dropping the glue in there it's like if you're a welder when you gas weld or TIG weld the the molten ball on the end of the rod falls into the weld kind of thing. It's like that. It's almost like brazing it.
you can see here there's not enough glue in that area there. You must be frightened of putting too much of this stuff on because uh, it's better to have a drop too much than not enough. What you're looking for is when you squeeze it together you want to see this glue oozing out and then you know you've got enough in there. Now this area here, it looks like that pin is just a tad too long. So what I'm tempted to do is actually cut it off so it's not there at all because it's just going to get in the way. There we go. So now that goes together much better. You can see it's all pulled together. And I'm just going to give that a tweak to line that vent up. So you can see now we've got a nice soft, wet, sticky mess all along the leading edge. And that's what we want. We want it to be... We want to make sure it's welded together. You can see the, the, the glue oozing out here. See how it's wet and sticky and that's what you want. You want a really solid welded edge. I mean you could if you want to come along with a paintbrush, dip it in your extra thin and run it down there. And on the inside if you want to just to make sure. But um, <clears throat> make sure we get some in the top there. There we go. And I'm going to give that a good squeeze. There we are. So that's our fin together. Job done. So again, we need to leave this, as I say, we're going to leave it for a good 48 hours before we start to sand that trailing edge. We get those set those training edges sanded down nice and sharp and uh, believe me they'll look so much better when they're done like that so no clamping on this one obviously if you clamp in the middle there you're just going to cause it to break so um better not do any clamping on there and, uh, there we go that's our tail planes and our fin done we've been about two or three hours now since we put this together so i think we can uh safely say that these windows will be safe to rub down now the other thing i need to do is glue these undercarriage bay roofs in because otherwise they're going to be rattling around although i suppose it doesn't matter if they rattle around does it um so what we're going to do we are going to take some cheap masking tape i, if it's, I think i might go, go have a go at breaking these down now just in case they do pop out um so we'll take some cheap masking tape and cover our panel lines okay like so. The reason I'm using the cheap stuff is A, it's cheap, B, it's thick. So um, and it's just so if we if we run off and touch the panel lines, it won't destroy them. Um, if I was doing this as like a proper big, big professional build or something, then uh, if as professional as I could get, then I would um, I would be rescribing it anyway. But scribing is not my strongest point. So I'm going to have to find something to sand this with. And I want something hard. I don't want to use a sponge. So I'm going to use this Infini stick. And this one is the uh, 10 mil wide one. And I'm just going to sand on here. This is 400 grit. And I'm not going to go pushing in. And I'm going to wet it with my finger. And the object of the exercise here is to get this clear part flush with the fuselage and also hopefully get rid of that great big sink mark in the middle of it. So I'm going to clean this off now. So I've got my. I don't know what I'm going to do. Once you get the wings on this thing, it's going to be so unwieldy. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got an old pair of jeans. Now. I've cut the bottom off an old pair of jeans rather than ruin all my jeans. Because it seems all my jeans now have got a hole in the uh, front of the right thigh where I keep rubbing sanding sticks on them. So There we go. 
go so that's coming down now and I need to be careful on that upper area that I don't take out that, that um, panel line because although we're going to be doing some repairs on them we don't want to be needlessly sanding them away so that's still got a step on the top of it there I'm off camera aren't I? Sorry guys There we go, so that's that's got that window sanded flush and we've also managed to take out that seat mark in the middle. So now I'm going to take a sanding sponge, this one here, so we've obviously got a seat mark in the back as well that we can see, so great. <laughs> One of the things with older kits, clear parts always let them down. In fact, some newer kits, some of the, uh, I've got three Airfix 170 second scale Lancasters and every one of them has got dodgy, uh, dodgy clear parts. There's all these um, spider lines in them. And I actually contacted Airfix and they said, yeah, that's part of the process. Sorry, sir. Okay. Trumpeter don't get it. Kitty Hawk don't get it. Kitty Larry don't get it. Ravel don't get it. Tammy, I definitely don't get it. Part of the moulding process. Hmm. Funny, isn't it? Because if you look at the uh, the one twenty fourth Typhoon, Airfix had to do a recall, or well, not a recall, but send out a load of replacements of them, didn't they? Because they were um, no good. So I've done that, and now we've got this. I'm going to actually go over this well, sponge here. This is two thousand five hundred grit. So I'm just going to wet it and just polish like that. Okay, so now we can see it's starting to properly shine and then I've got this 4000 grit polishing sponge. I can go over that when it starts to squeak we know we're pretty much there. I'm sorry I'm hitting the camera stand. So yeah that sink mark you can see is on the inside so that's a shame. Nothing we can do about it I'm afraid. And there we go, if I can get that in the light, so we'll take the tape off and we can see that we haven't damaged any of our panel lines at all. I'm just going to use my 4000 grit just to polish out any marks from the sides there. But once this has got camouflage on it, that won't notice anyway. But we can see that the clear part is now flush with the surface and is shiny. Okay, so we can go along now and do the same on the other one and then I'll be back. And they're both done. So you can see now this side's done as well and that's all polished and everything. Now I've got a mark in the fuselage there I need to sand out. That's where the tape was. Let's just blend that out. There we go, and that's all flush. Now this one has got a divot in the middle of it and is, is actually on the outside, so I don't know how we're going to cure that. But what I will be doing is going around here with some thick black paint because there's a gap. You can see there's a gap around the clear part where it doesn't fit that well. So um, basically go around there with some thick black paint to fill that gap in and then I'll put some crystal clear over the top of it after we've done everything else. So um, <clears throat> we're now looking at putting our fuselage halves together. Now one thing I did do off camera I put a piece of sprue in there with some sprue goo you can see just to sort of make this cockpit floor a bit stronger because it was only on those two pins and I thought if you know with all the hanging around hanging out holding it and shaking it and god knows what and I thought I'd better um, 
better do that. The other thing I'll be looking at is the bomb bay. The bomb bay is designed to go in after you've assembled the fuselage. You open the bomb bay doors and slide that in. Obviously we're not going to worry about that because we don't need it. It's not going to add any strength really because we've got that bit there and all this down here so it's going to be absolutely fine without it. So we now need to, we now need to look at putting the fuselage house together. Now this is a pretty major task. Now I've got the box here to the left of me and it's all closed up. So let's just get the lid off the box so I can show you the instructions. So if you don't have this particular kit, you can follow along with what I read out. Just my luck, the instructions are at the bottom of the box. I don't know how that's happened. But basically, okay, we've done, we've done all of this. All the way along here we've done all of that and we made up the rear gun and we put the windows in and everything so now step 10 is just words and what it basically says is cement fuselage halves together follow this procedure to prevent the cement from drying before the halves can be put together when cementing use pieces of tape to hold a cemented seam together right what they're talking about here is tube cement tube in the days when this was made all these like tamiya extra thins and all these fancy glues you've got now weren't available all you had was tube cement now you'd put that on and it would dry fairly quickly. So because this is such a large area, they're, to, they're sort of giving you an idea of how to do it. I've just noticed something else we're going to do as well. I'm going to put the crew access door in here before we close the fuselage up. Um, and then they're saying use pieces of tape to hold a cemented seam together. Do not do that if you're using liquid cement. Okay, glue it together. Use the liquid cement. I'll, I'll show you all this in a minute. Hold it together, let the glue go gungy if you like, go sticky, then you can tape it. Same with putting a rubber band on it. If you put a rubber band on and then you let the tape run down the joint, the glue run down the joint, the glue will come out and run around the rubber band and it will ruin the surface of your model and the rubber band will snap and blah 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 blah. So what they're saying is apply cement along the top edge of the right fuselage from nose to tail, working quickly. Attach left fuselage half, slightly open bottom seam, apply cement from nose to large doors, finally cement edge from large doors to the tail. Okay, so we can kind of follow that. We're basically going to do the top first because we want the top to be the best. We want the top to be lined up, all matched up, not too much sanding and, and if we can, no filling. So we're basically going to kind of follow what they're saying but also ignore it. Now the other thing I want to do is get this access door wherever it may be. Where is that? Where is the access door? The crew Essex hatch that goes underneath the front of the fuselage. There it is. Okay so it's number 39. Oh and there it is I can see it's right on the top of the box luckily and I want to glue this in first because I want to make sure that this is going to fit in there all nice and flush and not be um, not be you know sort of just wanting to fall in because I think the kit is designed to have this door fitted in the open position and I don't want it in the open position because when you look up inside there's nothing to see so it's basically going to go that way so we're obviously going to cut away so it's designed to go in like that with it open, you can see, and I don't want it open, I want it closed. So basically we're going to cut these legs off, like so, and then sand away the nibs that are left behind. And then that door is just going to glue into that hole there, and it is a lovely fit, I must be honest. That is a lovely fit. So. I think what we'll do is just put these fuselage halves together and it's fine widthwise it's not going to stop the fuselage going together so I think what I'm going to do is get this door in like so get my Tamiya extra thin over here some in that, that in there and let that capillary around there's plenty gone in there okay close the glue up and then if anything I want the door to be well I want to try and get it flush if I can so it doesn't need any work 
Now I did mention about this screw hatch being off on one side. So I want to say a big thank you to Paul. Paul Murphy sent me an email and sent me some pictures and explained what it's all about. Basically on the A, B, C, D, E and F models, they used the navigators um, escape hatch as the entrance hatch. And there are pictures he sent me and there's some pictures on um, Google as well. But you can look up inside and you can actually see the bottom of the uh, navigator's chair or seat, should I say. So um, that's what they used. And then later on, they moved it back here on the uh, G models, G and H models. There's actually quite a lot of differences with the G and H and their earlier counterparts. But um, basic fuselage shapes and everything are the same. Um, I've seen people say <laughs> the Italeri kit out back here is very, very skinny. If you look back in my videos, I've done a video on showing you how to modify it and make it wider so it's the right size. But basically the Italeri kit is very skinny back here and it's too skinny. And uh, somebody said that that's what they did on that on the later B-52s because there wasn't a man back there, so it didn't need to be as wide. Yeah. Um, so... Basically, that's not correct. The actual fuselage shape should be the same all the way back. It just looks skinnier because it's much longer. So, um, there we go. That's that in there. So that door is fine. Now, what I'm tempted to do now is get another piece of my scrap plastic card and just bridge it across there just to give it a bit of backing because I don't want to go and push that door in. So let me go and find a piece of plastic and then I'll be back. Okay, this is just a piece of scrap plastic that was in my box. I think it's just over a millimetre thick, but never mind. Uh, or it's about a millimetre thick. I mean, it's not half a millimetre. So if you're doing this, you can do the same thing. And what I'm going to do is cut a piece off the end. You can just use half a millimetre and then... But I don't have any without breaking into a new sheet. So what I'm going to do is just put that in there like that. And then I'm going to wedge this piece in there. No, I'm not. It's too thick. So I'm just going to glue that in there like that. Some glue on there. And that this should just basically help to give that door a bit of support. Because I don't want to go pushing it in when I start sanding and stuff. Okay, so there we are. So I'm going to get my coarse sanding stick again. And as I showed you before, I'm going to sand this, this little tiny piece of plastic, sand it into a wedge and then wedge that in there like so. There we go. Just put some glue around that. And that's it. That's that door in place and it's going nowhere because it's wedged in. Right, getting the fuselage together. First thing we'll make sure there's no dust or anything in the cockpit area. Get a brush, just brush it out just like so. Same on this side. That's that done. So we'll just put these fuselage halves together like this and have a look at how they fit. And we can see here that the fit is lovely. Okay, pull the nose together there, that's going to be fine. Pull that together, that's going to be fine. All of the back ends going to go together beautifully. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a rubber band on here just to temporarily hold the front together and I want to start at the rear end because I want to get that gun in there and that is going to go that way up sorry no it's that way isn't it there we go that's that gun is it that way up yes it is so Put that in there, make sure the gun's all moving around. Don't worry about the dust on your fingers, you're going to get loads of sanding dust everywhere anyway when you uh, when you come to um, 
sand all these seams out. So we're going to concentrate on the top and we're going to be careful not to break our undercarriage legs off. So what I want to do is I'm just going to start back here. If you remember, we've got alignment problems here. We've had from the beginning. So up to here, all the panel lines and everything, all everything's great. And then all of a sudden at the back end here, we get a bit of misalignment. So we just have to do a bit of plastic card work, perhaps some sanding, whatever, to get these clear parts to fit in. But basically, that's all looking good. So I'm going to take my extra thin. And basically just flood this area here because I want it to all glue together real nicely and I don't want any dry seams so I'm going to get a peg clamp that together just check we've got everything level the thing is if we want to get the fuselage right on the top Being careful not to break the undercarriage legs. So there we go. We've got not got too much of a step in there now. That's I'm going to find something a tighter clamp to hold it together a bit tighter. I'm not sure if this will do it or if it will just slide off. Yeah, it's just going to slide off. Okay, so there we go. So that's that bit done. Now, what I want to do now is get my cocktail stick, wherever it may be. Let's get a fresh one and shove it in the fuselage. There we go. So we can hold everything apart now. You can see now we can get the glue to capillary down into that joint there. Lovely. So. Just put some down in there. And like I say, plenty of glue. Don't be scared of it. Give that a squeeze and we want to see it oozing out all the way along. If you see any areas where it's not oozing, like here. We just keep going. I mean, to be honest, this area where I'm working now isn't absolutely critical because it's underneath the fin. But we may as well get it as good as we can. I can move my toothpick forward, hold it here. Get some glue into that boss part there. Right, so, big clamp, like so. We just work our way along. And as you can see what I'm doing here, I'm putting the glue in and when I squeeze it, I'm not getting anything coming out. And we're getting something now, so I'm just going to keep going until I get the glue oozing out. There we go, you see it coming up now, here. And there we go, move the cocktail stick along a bit more. See that oozing out there, but it's still a bit wet to be putting any tape or anything on there. You just gotta hold it. So I'm gonna turn the camera off because I'm gonna hold this for a good couple of minutes before I put a rubber band on there. Right, so we've got rubber bands on now. You can see I've got two, and the reason is I'm gonna roll one down here when we get the glue down to here. So I'm gonna come in from the front with um, more rubber bands. 
So uh, I'm using rubber bands rather than tape because it keeps the pressure even around the complete fuselage. So you're getting the whole thing clamped together. If you use tape, you're just sort of pulling two halves together. And basically what we're doing now is like when we did the drop tanks or the wing tanks, we're basically aiming to get this step free area. So we're just pushing one side up and down so that the step is the same both ways. So basically if I slide one nail across there, I feel a small step. If I slide it across there, I feel a small step. If you, if you, what you're looking for is getting the fuselage halves like this, not like that, because that gives you loads more seam work to do. Now, when it comes to sanding, I'm not worried about these longitudinal panel lines here because they're just walkways. But what I don't want to do is be um, having to sand too much and annihilate the uh, the other lines as well. So, and we're going to look at how we're going to stop, prevent us from damaging them. Now, remember what I said, do not put rubber bands, like there's no way you should put a rubber band. These things are rubbish. They're multicoloured rubber bands that come from... Um, your supermarket and you can see that one just broke while it's sat there they're absolute garbage so I'm gonna have to put another big one on now I think and then um, and then we'll move on right back to where I was before I went on a rant about these bloody awful rubber bands um, basically don't ever put rubber bands on and then put your, your extra thin on because the extra thin will run into the seam under the rubber band and around so you don't want to be doing that so again I'm feeling that for no steps okay now this is all glued here so the glue's not going to run along there so Put some glue in here. I'm going to move my cocktail stick up. Let's get a bit of a bigger gap going on. So we can put the glue down in there. I can see it's not going into the joint there, so I know that up to here is absolutely fine. So here we can put the glue in just like so just like that along And again, what we're doing is getting the getting all our glue, plenty of it, into the joints. There we go. Hold that. Move our cocktail stick down a bit. And let that go off before we start manipulating things again. Okay, so moving on, doing exactly the same thing over and over again. Now you can see that I've got glue up to here, so we'll start gluing up to there. Pull my cocktail stick down a bit because I want. So I'm going to stick a rule in here and then I can twist it and manipulate. I want to make sure I'm getting capillary action down here because it looks like I could have a dry spot. In case you didn't know, if you do glue something wrong, what do you think the best way is to get it apart? It's more glue. If you pick up a model that somebody else has started and they've glued a, the tail planes on upside down or something, the best way to get them off is to put this liquid cement around the joint, leave it for 10 minutes, let it do its work, put some more on there, and then you can, um, you'll be able to get the parts apart. There we go, we've got squidginess now all the way along now, that's alright then. Now looking at this, I was going to put rubber bands in the middle, but the trouble is I would have to stretch them over the undercarriage legs and I don't want to risk breaking them off, so I'm going to have to use tape here. So 
So we'll move this. Shouldn't have done that, should I? Move our rule down. You can see when I push together the squidginess stops about here so we need we need some more and when I say squidginess I mean the glue oozing up out of the joint and having that glue oozing up out of the joint that's molten plastic and it should remove the need for any filler the downside to doing this and getting it all dripping wet is there's a lot of solvent in there so we may get a sink line but if we don't try and sand it too soon we should be okay. And if you don't have the liquid cement, you could just go around with your contact or whatever, first of all, and um, you'll be good to go. So we'll just do up to there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to make a mark where I went up to. So just let that gel, and then we'll be using my fingernail to feel. You can see I've got no step going that way. This way, got steps. I'm just going to squeeze, squeeze things about. There we go. And I'm going to grab some masking tape and I think I'll use my Tamiya 18 mils. Oh no, there's a Mr. Hobby 10 mil here we can use this one. So we'll put the tape over the top and as I say once the glue's gone squidgy you're safe to do this but when it's still wet don't try it. And I know I'm repeating myself but it's a, it's a very important rule to save you destroying the surface detail of your model. Right, so now we can just feel that again. Okay, we'll leave that for a little while to go off I think and then we'll um, Come back and do a bit more once we're uh, once we're kind of once this is sort of set itself off a bit. Right, see you in a second. Right, so that's been I don't know 15, 20 minutes. That's had a chance to kind of harden up. We're still checking those seams and making sure we're all level along the top. We're going to get some movement. It's inevitable, um, but you know you've just got to try your best. You can't do any better than that. So get this glue in here and get it to get, go in, into the gap. Give it a squeeze, same old thing, just repeating myself over and over again. But, you know, guys, remember this is for beginners. And, you know, beginners will find stuff like this quite intimidating, even though us more experienced modelers don't. And I know there's a million different ways to skin a cat. But I don't want to skin a cat.
Okay, so what I've done now, I've put the cocktail stick right at the front now, so it's just going to pull this apart, okay? And I'm going to move that rubber band away because I don't want any glue to get under that. This is one of the problems with the Tamiya brush. It's so small, it doesn't hardly pick up any glue. So when you're doing big joints like this, you're forever putting the the brush into the glue. Right. So I'll get rid of that rubber band because I don't want to risk having the glue capillary under it and we'll go right along to the front now. What I'm going to do now is put some tape on the bottom just to hold it all together because it's all starting to fall apart. And what I can do now is just come back here, check. Yep, we've got a step. There's a step going that way, nothing that way. So just push that side down, pull this side up. And we've got a step going both ways. Same there, Get some tape, put the tape down on one side, pull it tight down onto the other side and that will hold it all together. Okay, now we can carry on putting the glue up here. Let's get our cocktail stick back in the front again. Just want to get something in there just to open that up a touch. Here we go. Let's just open that up a touch so I can get some glue down in there. And then we can concentrate on getting some glue into this bit here. Give that a squeeze, make sure we got squidginess coming out all the way. That looks a little bit dry there, so I'm just going to put some in. Hopefully it'll work its way in. As I say, you'll see a dry joint because when you sand it, if you sand it, it will become 
a white line and if you see white lines when you're sanding then you got a problem I'm just going to feel that we've got a step there so I'm going to steps even. Piece of tape on that side, pull it over there. Just give it a push and it'll you're just basically moving it around. Okay so that glue's all quite squidgy now so we can take a rubber band one here so we can go around three times like so and then we'll roll it back and be very careful because when you roll it back if your hand slips bang you'll knock the undercarriage off so it's probably best to do it this way around and there we go that will hold that together and you can see the glue all oozing out where it's under pressure Checking our step, so we've got a step that way, nothing that way, so we push this side down. I've got an equal step both ways, same up here. And I'm just going to come along and glue this nose together. how well that instrument panel is fitted now if you remember the problems we had with that in the last episode so I can hold that together as you can see we've got a gap there so I'm gonna to have to tape that together I don't want to be putting a rubber band around here because it will basically it will just pull that roof section down so And these areas here they're actually just, they should be glazing and the kit gives you decals what we'll do is we'll probably paint them gloss we'll, we'll probably mask them off and paint them gloss black when all said and done so I'm going to take some tape and pull it over this side and tape that together and hopefully that will hold And again we want to make sure we don't have we've got a massive step there so we just push that side down and it all feels pretty even now so we'll get another rubber band this is another big one and tight on there really make that joint work there we go there we are now that is all held together solidly now so I'm just checking my steps So as you can see it's a bit involved it's uh but it's something you'll enjoy and it's something that's very very satisfying because rather than just gluing together the you know a little spitfire or something this long you're actually working with something quite large and the beauty of it is it's not too scary because even if I discovered now that back here I had a step, you know, if I slide my finger over there and I feel I got a step one way and not a step the other way, I can still manipulate it because there's so much glue in there. It's all going to stay nice and soft for, for a good hour or so and you can still play with it. Like here, you see I've got a step there now so I can 
manipulate that what I'm doing is just squeezing that side down and pulling this side up to try and even up the step and if you can't see the step because of the glue just take a knife and just cut the, the excess glue away and then you'll see the step there you can see there it's got steps I'm going to pull it sometimes the snaps steps inevitable and you won't get rid of it so that's when you're gonna to have to start doing your filler work and stuff sometimes you might find that you know you push this level here and it puts that out and then when you put that right it puts that out and that out and you've just got to sort of go with it really I say this is a, you know it's a, it's a very old kit it's a it's a 52 year old mold and it's um I mean the kit itself is 30 odd years old so you know, if it's been in somebody's attic, it's been hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. It's bound to have distorted slightly. So there we are. I'm going to leave it at that because I'm just fighting now. Because now I get that right, it goes out here. So there we are. So we can leave that like that, let that go off, and then we can start working on the bottom. And obviously the bottom isn't as important as the, important as the top because we can... Play with that to our heart's content. Oh, and I'm going to put some glue in there on that instrument panel. Just to lock that in. And then I'm going to get a little piece of tape. On the top of there, stick that down and just give it a little. Maybe it'll help to hold it, I don't know. And there we go right so here we go um i don't know 12 14 hours later so this seems good and hard now and uh we can see that we've got the glue oozed out there and we've got that that hard plastic there but we're going to leave it for another day or so before we start sanding because the thing is with this what you've basically done you've put all that glue in there um the glue is basically a, a solvent that melts the plastic and welds them together as i've told you before so obviously now we've got a seam there which is hardening over time and it kind of dries from the inside out so if we start sanding getting this seam perfect now what we'll find is when we come back in say two days time you'll find you'll have a sink mark so it's best to leave this as long as you can which is why we did you know if you remember we built up these wing tanks and everything i told you that's why and these will be absolutely rock solid now they're you know sort of a week ago they were done so you know it's okay to work on them and those seams will remain stable and it's the same with your fillers and everything if you start using chemical fillers not the not the water-based stuff but your chemical fillers you put them in you know you, you're keen to get on so as soon as they start to go off you start to sand them and then straight away you start to find them starting to sink so um it's best to be patient and leave it as long as you can so we will actually finish gluing this fuselage together but then not now but in the next video we'll start moving on to the wings and the engines and stuff before we start moving on these seams so what i need to do now is start looking at the underneath and i'm basically just going to do the same thing again now around this area here i'm going to have to use tape because obviously i don't want to put rubber bands over those undercarriage legs we're going to have to be careful when we put the the glue into the joints because we don't want it to capillary under the under the rubber band so what i will do there is roll this rubber band you know all the way up here glue this area and then roll the rubber band down there to hold it and then basically work like that and if we move if we roll this one up so it's in the undercarriage bay like that then we know it can't get under there so um that's what we're going to do so what i might do here is just shut up and speed the video up so you can basically see what i'm doing but not have to sit through hours of just watching me put glue into seams so i'm going to get rid of this tape here so we'll get rid of that and then what we can do is just work on the seam now i want to get this rubber band out of the way and this is all held together quite nicely so what i might do is just take this off actually and sometimes the safest way to get these off is to just cut them but the beauty of the b52 is it kind of tapers off at either end so i'm not running too much risk of damaging anything to be honest but i do want to be careful here so what i'll do is i'll put my thumb there and then roll the see it rolls onto my thumb 
rather than have it go down in there and break anything. So, um, so there we go. Now you can see this is all held together. You know, even though it's not glued, you can see I can get a gap in there, but it's all sort of held together. So what we'll do, as I say, I'll speed the video up now and you can just watch me work my way along. Right, so you can see here what I've just done. I've rolled that, that rubber band up to where it's already glued because I know the glue cannot capillary through the seam where the glue is already dry. So it's okay, the glue is not gonna get under that rubber band because it can't get sort of past here where it's glued. So we've got a gap here, and obviously it can't get past, and we've got dried glue there that it can't get past, or, or curing glue, should I say. So, um. There we go. And if you notice, I'm using a rule instead of a cocktail stick because it's thinner and it's easier to get in there and it doesn't pop out and it doesn't snap so easily. So my rule about using a cocktail stick, maybe change it for using a rule because it does seem to work a lot better. You really need to be careful now. Roll that rubber band, it's gone down behind that gunner's head. So the safest way to avoid any damage is to just come along and cut it. Just cut through that rubber band. Wow. These things normally snap for a pastime. There we go. Rather than try and roll it out, pull it out, whatever, you just damage stuff. So it's easier just to cut it off. 
you do get it stuck somewhere. Okay, so this I've already glued this area here. And there we go. So now I'm going to slide this one down to here. Okay, and all that's going to stay together beautifully and we can take another smaller one take another one of those small ones and just put that around there like that just to help so there we go so what we need to do now is as uh, same as the top just run along and do our step check so I'll start at the front and that's all nice and level, that's all nice and level, that's all nice and level, that's level. Take that peg off of there. You see now that's neat, that needs to go down. Yeah, that's gonna have to be sanded out because unfortunately, because it's glued to the undercarriage legs. I can't actually move it without breaking something, so I'm just going to leave that and we'll sand that out. There we go. So that's it guys. That is the V52 fuselage all glued together. I haven't glued along here yet because there's a bit of a step and I'm going to deal with that in a different way. So um, I think we'll call that a day for part eight. I'm going to put some more glue in here because we've got a bit of a mismatch and if I put some more glue in there it'll help to just soften it up and allow me to move it. You can also see we've got a mismatch in that hatch there. So, um, yeah, I think this area is going to take quite a lot of sanding because this, this back end is quite problematic. It's almost like sort of from here back, it's like a different mold, it's really weird. And um, as I said, I've got three of the, in fact, I've got four of them, um, four of these kits and they're all the same. So one of them is a, is a is an actual 1968 model in the original boxing so I haven't checked that one I haven't had it out of the box but uh, I'll bet it's the same but it's interesting the original early boxing also had the side window here that the um, the original D's had and then for some reason it got covered up you can see it on some it's plated over no one seems to know what the actual date was when that happened but um on some of the early D's they've got a hole there plated up and some of them don't have a plate there at all. But uh, Monogram changed the tooling in there uh, at some point to, uh, to get rid of it. So there we go. So if somebody's selling you an original Monogram kit in the original boxing, you know, with this mount, the motor and everything, if it doesn't have a hole there, They've, uh, they've what they've done they've put some modern parts in an old box so be careful of that if you're a collector although I don't think they're worth very much but um I'd certainly I don't think I'll build mine because it's uh, it's just so lovely to have anyway there we go so I think we'll call that a day for part eight uh, I'm not sure how long it's been probably about an hour which I'm trying to keep them all to 
So um, we've got that all done now. Everything's glued together. No big gaps anywhere. So I'm happy with how that's gone. Um, in fact, I am going to just put some cement. It looks like we may have a bit of a non-glued area there. We shall see. Anyway, so I'll um, I'll see you all soon, guys, for part nine. And uh, happy modelling, and, and hope you're enjoying this. Bye for now.